And here he is joining us on this Friday. John, how are you? I'm doing well. Happy to be here. Yeah, well, it's great to have you. It's always great. You know, we're getting closer to football, and, you know, Michigan fans are really excited about the upcoming season. They're also excited about a quarterback commitment they got this year in Jaden Davis. And uh, I thought we'd start there. You saw him uh, this summer. Do you remember the first time that you saw or or heard about Jaden Davis? Yeah, I was going to say, the first time I heard about him, he's probably in eighth grade. You know, uh, they're playing in South Carolina. We hear about this up and coming quarterback. Everyone's like, he's already 5'11, six foot. He's already physical. He's polished. And then you go see the kid. I think I saw him probably a year later. And, and yeah, he looks like the biggest eighth, ninth grade quarterback you've ever seen. And, and then you say, okay, well, if you start projecting this years down the line, um, this is going to be one of those guys, right? One of those polarizing names that is out there for several years to scout uh, and sometimes over scout, you know, I think, which is a, an issue in our industry. And, and here we are four years later, and, and he's coming off of a state title coming off of the elite 11 finals as this guy that we've known about for so very long. Uh, and I think it just creates, it creates a lot uh, relative to that evaluation. You know, you, you get a first impression that is unanimously positive. Cause you're like, this kid's bigger than everyone. He's already slinging it. He's got velocity on the ball. You could tell there's a maturity there in his build and how he carries himself. And as he progresses years down the line and and plays varsity football, you start to see others sort of catch up to Jaden Davis. So it's a fascinating evaluation in terms of where we were with him a year or two ago and where he'll be in the final rankings come January, which is obviously still very much to be determined. Yeah, you saw him this summer at the Elite 11, and, and there, you know, you mentioned the over scouting, and, you know, I saw, you know, some different evaluations, and I'd say, I don't know, all over the place, but, you know, mixed reviews with Jaden Davis. Uh, what did you see from Davis throwing at the Elite 11 against the other QBs? Well, you got the congruence of, of those initial impressions, right? The build is, is really strong. I thought he, he came in right around 200 pounds six foot one or so. So very well put together relative to most juniors in high school football. And I thought the velocity looked really strong. I thought his short to intermediate stuff was really great. Uh, I thought you could just tell there's this polish, this ball distributor point guard mentality in this kid. So when it came to spraying the ball around left, right on the run in the pocket, you could see the comfort, you could see the maturity there. I think where the opinions became became a little bit more polarizing were when the kids were supposed to be uncomfortable. You know, that that's what the Elite 11 is all about, is making you go against the grain, rolling to your left, throwing across your body, throwing on time, um, 400 throws a day, whatever it is. It's designed to sort of wear you down. Uh, so I thought that's where you could see the opinions start to go up and down with really every quarterback. But I think Davis came in with such – lofty expectations compared to most to where you're almost already starting at the top and trying to peg them down thereafter. But again, the velocity looked good. I thought his ball distribution was phenomenal Um, up and down, down the field. But I think everybody had sort of those moments, uh, particularly in the pro day workout, which is really the most scrutinized and and even over scrutinized workout. I mean, I chart all 400 throws of that workout. So, I mean, I'm way too nitpicky than I probably should be on an event like that, but we do get to see some variance between the passers in that regard. And I think the other inhibitor for Jaden was, was throwing motion. You know, he brings the ball a little bit further back than most quarterbacks and he releases it a little bit lower than most quarterbacks. So at six foot, six foot one, it just creates a little bit of, Oh, the first time you do see it live or the the next time you see it live compared to some of the more classic over the top deliveries or three quarter deliveries that we get uh, across the country. Yeah. And I can see if I put, I don't know, 25 uh, analysts or gurus, whatever you want to say, watching uh, quarterbacks, you know, once you talk about the, the size, you're going to talk, look at the motion. And if it looks a little different, like, and you said a classic delivery, I want you, you know, like if this was four or five years ago, I think if I was there, and, and the delivery looked a little different. I might be freaking out myself, but what I've seen is, you know, since Mahomes has really taken over and, and changed the game in the pros, that there's a lot of 
sidearm, different deliveries, different platform. And, and, and he looks like watching some of his tape in games that he does that. I don't really notice. I, I didn't see it that elite 11. It has his, his motion changed or when you look at his, his junior tape, can you still see what you're talking about? What you saw this summer, maybe the, you know, different release point or whatever. Yeah, look, I think every setting demands, you know, different uh, abilities from these kids. If, if you are in a competitive setting like the Elite 11 and you want to put a little bit more juice on the ball, maybe you do drop the arm angle a little more. Maybe you feel more comfortable coming from, from your midsection than, than up here at different times. You know, you, you can't really put too much into those things. I remember a couple of years ago, Tyler Buckner had an awful Elite 11 his motion was so funky and everybody was like, what happened? This, this is a great quarterback. And he corrected it. You know, so I do think you you take it for what it's worth. But you look, if you're going back to the junior tape, which let's remind everyone is the foundation of every evaluation. I don't want to make it seem like uh, we're putting too much stock in, in the offseason events, although seeing them throw together is, is certainly important. You go back to the junior tape, you do see a little bit more conventional three-quarter delivery. Um, you're stepping up in the pocket, the timing really strong with Jaden Davis. I mean, look, you can't put up, what was it, 3,000 yards, 72% completion percentage without being on time, especially in a Chad Greer offense down there in, in North Carolina. So he's checking most of the boxes. And, and look, he's still a five-star for us at Rivals. I think we've probably got him ranked as high as, as anybody does in the industry for a reason. So you want to take, you want to take the events and the settings for what they are. uh, But you also want to kind of put it in a big body of work. So again, with Davis, we get this variance over three or four years, as opposed to other passers that were only scouting for 12 months, you know, so we we get to over scout in in some capacity with, with a Jaden Davis type, because he was so heralded so young. And then maybe when we do see the variance in the throwing motion, it, it throws us off maybe more than it would for a guy who's a little bit newer to our radar. All right. A couple more minutes here with John Garcia, junior national college football recruiting analyst for rivals.com. And you talked about over evaluating or, or, or scout and over scouting, but uh, can you talk about the challenges of evaluating and then, and then ranking players uh, all the way through from when you first see them and then to that, you know, that final January ranking, you know, how much do you put into, what you see on tape when they're playing during the season, if you go see them live and then at different camps or all-star games or whatever else, like the elite 11, what are those challenges? Oh, there's, there's so many, Uh, of course, every, everything you do gather is a data point, but you weigh those very differently. And, And it even has to do with the position. So quarterback, obviously you're weighing everything, every single thing you see, whether it's body language, his demeanor, the competitiveness um, how in shape he is. I mean, you're you're weighing every single element you can with a quarterback because it's not as much about traits as it becomes about production and about what you do in between your ears. Uh, but other positions, if you're watching a defensive end or if you're watching a, a tight end, maybe a defensive back, it's so much driven by the traits. It's driven by the height, weight measurables, the speed, the length. Um, the, the flash almost over the whole body of work like you would uh, with, with a quarterback prospect. So obviously there's so many challenges. You know, there's only, first of all, so many of us uh, that do this. And, and when we compare notes, you get variance between us. So imagine trying to uh, put all of this uh, together in, in one snapshot. That's why I think the rolling evaluation updates every few months makes the most sense, right? Because if we are too lenient on a breakout season on the field or some off field track times, let's our off season track times. We can kind of correct that over time as we get through the end of their senior seasons, which is always the most important into that, that final um, end of the season in between national signing day uh, in December and and February, we get into that crunch time. We can kind of make sure we're, we're settled there at the end of it, but it's incredibly difficult because everybody ranks on a different scale. Uh, we try to use the NFL as our, our guide, if that makes sense. But obviously, there's there's so much more availability when you're scouting at the NFL level than what we get. We've got to travel. We've got to weigh the competition. You've got to weigh the setting. You've got to weigh the system at times. So there are really so many undefined variables that uh, it's purely an inexact science. But I think here at Rivals and elsewhere, I think the industry is getting better as, as we progress. 
Well, it's good to hear that you're not just sitting back throwing darts out in the garage and like, <laughs> all right, let's drop or we got Gorney on the phone telling you, let's drop Davis because we got some other guys that could, you know, that we could push up there. Hey, I appreciate your time. I got two quick questions for you and they're about players and they are guys that are interested in Michigan. I, I know you're, you're down there in the Sunshine State, right? Yes, uh, Zaquan Patterson is a five-star safety you know, from Hollywood, I, Hollywood, Florida. I know one of Michigan's commitments for 25, uh, Chris Ewald Jr., a yeah. four-star corner, I believe, is in the same high school. But, you know, he says he likes Michigan. Do you think they got a shot? I do think they got a shot. The longer this thing plays out, it's probably the better – for a school like Michigan. He's about to take that return visit up to Ann Arbor, as you mentioned. And, and this is a very structured kid. He's a captain at Shamanan Madonna. He's very much um, methodical in, in his decision making. So a well-organized approach, even a defensive laden approach, as, as some would uh, suspect with Michigan, is something that's going to appeal to him, even though it's probably the furthest school from home that he is uh, considering at this point. But they absolutely have a shot, especially the longer this recruitment goes. The shorter, you probably lean a little bit more towards Miami, Florida State. Auburn feels pretty good right now. But the longer it draws out, particularly into the season, you feel better about Michigan's chances 100%. All right. And and one final one is David Sanders Jr. And that's a, a 25 recruit, a, a tackle. The good news is, uh, you know, he's at where Jaden Davis is at, Providence Day. Yeah. In Charlotte, North Carolina, I think additional good news is Shannon Goodwin is his teammate, who's a Michigan commitment. Maybe bad news is, uh, you know, Jordan Ship. It doesn't mean it's automatic, you know, that these guys are all going to follow Davis and and uh, and Goodwin to Ann Arbor. But uh, do you feel like Michigan has at least a good, pretty good shot at maybe landing they have the best tackle in the class next year? Look, they're, they're right in the thick of it. You mentioned the obvious connections, and, and that matters. And I think what's shifted with recruits, particularly in the South and how they view Michigan, is the winning. You know, sometimes we get so caught up in NIL and all these other intricacies. Michigan has been in the playoff. Michigan has climbed over aggressively that Ohio State mountain in the Big Ten. That stuff really does resonate and matter uh, with, with the Southern recruit because it's about that exposure and that profile. How visible are you? as a program all of that stuff carries more weight and that michigan offer over the last two three cycles it's heavier when kids get it which is why you see kids committing earlier chris ewald who you mentioned might be the number one corner in the country next cycle committed very early and has conviction in that verbal commitment though of course he's young and, and there's other schools involved so that matters a little bit more at michigan right now uh, so it's a great time for them to pull further away from that classic midwestern footprint in my opinion well, speaking of a great time, it was a great time talking with you, John. Continued success. Love your work. And uh, it was great to have you on here on the Maze and Blue Review. Take care.